Welcome back, everybody, to the 3 o'clock uh, Central Time Hour of Big Talk from Small Libraries 2015. Just as a reminder, and for those of you who just joined us, uh, we will happily take questions for the speaker via the questions and answers section of your GoToWebinar interface or via Twitter with the hashtag BTSL. We are monitoring that, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to submit them either way. There is no active chat room to watch. That is just a limitation of the software that we are using. Everything is being recorded and will be posted sometime starting next week as we get everything edited and, and recorded. And oh yes, uh, the slides and the video will, will be up next week. Thank you, Krista. So with that, I'd like to welcome our, our next speaker, Janet McAllister. She is the director of the Rochester Public Library in Illinois. Uh, she is doing a uh, talk here on Kickstart Community Care. Excuse me. Wow. Kickstart Community Caring. Uh, welcome, Janet, and uh, thanks for presenting this afternoon. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Janet McAllister and I'm the director at the Rochester Public Library. Um, I've been at this library uh, for two and a half years. Um, prior to that, I was the assistant director uh, for 15 years at the Glen Carbon a Centennial Library, also in Illinois. Um, I have presented to many library conferences, but this is my first online presentation. I'm very excited to be here, but I'm also a little terrified. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how this uh, type of presentation goes for me today. Um, just so that you can kind of compare um, maybe the library that you're at um, to my library, um, I'm the director and there are three full-time employees. I have nine part-time employees. Um, the size of my district, um, the population is 7,993. Um, my annual budget um, is around 400,000. Um, we're kind of considered a medium-sized library here in Illinois. Um, but that helps you to see um, how my project could be used at your library um, with the number of employees or the population that you might have. So um, I'm hoping today to share with you um, the project that we've created, um, how we implemented the project, and how it's grown. Um, I hope you leave the session feeling inspired and to try some of our ideas at your library. I'm also hoping um, to steal some of your ideas. So if you have any programs or projects you'd like to share, please do so because um, there's no reason to keep reinventing the wheel. We should all be um, sharing each other's ideas. So kind of uh, the background as to why we started this whole project, um, we thought everyone has food in their pantry with the box tops for education. Um, and everyone would want to help their local schools, but not everyone has children um, in the school. Uh, myself, my children are um, grown in, in college, so, but I still have box tops, box tops that I would like to um, get to the school, and yet pretty much can't just walk into the school nowadays um, and say, here's my box top. So we thought we would be the perfect place for collecting the box tops um, for those people who don't have children um, in the school district. So that's kind of where we started this program with, um, and we just thought, you know, we are supposed to be the community hub, um, and so this is an easy way for our patrons to be able to participate in um, giving back to the um, school. Um, so it just made perfect sense for us to uh, start this project. Um, so um, in the beginning, we did what probably a lot of you libraries have tried. We did like food for fines. Uh, we collected really more money than we waived. So it was a great program um, for the library to provide. We also, um, from that program, decided to um, do um, school supplies for fines um, and then donate those supplies to the local school. The other thing we tried was the uh, coat drive. Um, and um, this is our third year now, a uh, picture of my, myself and the staff. Um, the very first year really was a young man who said, hey, can we collect coats? And we thought that was a great idea, so we started. Um, we've had, we, both, the last two times we've had over 100 
coats uh, donated to the library, uh, which we thought was a, a great success. Um, also, by putting it out on social media, um, the local news channel, Good Day Illinois, contacted us, and they actually um, did a morning little five-minute session with us here at the library. So it was great PR um, for our library. Um, we've also, with those coats, we've given the uh, adult size coats to um, a local shelter in our community, and we've also given the kids coats to a Boys and Girls Club, which is in Sangamon County. Um, and that, um, giving those coats to the Boys and Girls Club, really began our partnership with the Boys and Girls Club, um, which has really morphed into a, a great uh, partnership. Um, So when this all started, um, myself and um, my managers, we all sat together and we started thinking about who, who all could we use to um, help in the, in the community. So trying to decide on local organizations. Um, we are small community, um, but we're right outside of Springfield, Illinois. Um, so we decided to kind of spread our wings and uh, see how far we could go. We, so we include all of Sangamon County, really. Um, and with that, then we also, I wanted this to really kind of grow and take on its own. It needed to just kind of form as it went. We didn't put restrictions, and we just tried to see how it would um, grow with, um, with the rest of the staff's input, um, our volunteers, um, people in the community, our patrons, we asked and we listened. Um, very important that we made sure that everyone felt vested in the program. Um, so everyone's ideas were important to us. Um, we, you know, decided when, after we made our list of things that we would like to um, focus on, then we also decided how much time would this take, how, what materials would be needed. We also thought of, like, if we involve patrons in that, what times would be convenient for them, and then what the frequency of the programs would be. So we really sat down and uh, brainstormed um, and just really thought um, of all the programs that were near and dear to each of our hearts kind of thing. Um, and then we also... Um, really wanted to make sure that um, everyone felt included, so we put it out on our Facebook, um, we put it out in the newspaper, we're starting this program, what would you like to see us do? Um, we made sure we just kept asking patrons. Um, our, our library board members, we also asked them, you know, what would they like to um, have us um, volunteer and, and partner with? Um, I think um, that it was a big success because everybody was on board. Um, everyone felt vested in the project, um, and I think that makes a big difference um, as how well a program does in your community. So some of the things that we came up, like I talked to you before about, was um, the local schools, so the box tops for education. Um, a lot of these numbers for, were from last year, um, and we had collected over 500 box tops and, and turned those in. We also um, asked uh, patrons to bring in um, games they were no, lose, no longer using. Um, those went to a Big Brother, Big Sister. Um, we work with the Lions Club, um, and we have we collected over 140 pairs of glasses. Um, the Boys and Girls Club, we've taken them several boxes of books and games. Um, the Girl Scouts, um, we collect um, plastic bags for them, and then they take those to the local food bank. Um, Sangamon County Juvenile De Detention Center, um, we've taken uh, over six boxes of books to them. So we just keep reaching out um, to see who, you know, who else can we help and how can we um, get the community to also be on board with bringing in their stuff. Um, I think the plastic bags, I, we almost got to the point where I felt like we were like the Walmart where all the uh, bags were coming back to. So um, you also have to realize that um, it can grow faster than you would think it's going to grow, and 
to be prepared, but it's a great thing. Um, being that successful, I think, um, is what we all um, try to attain. So um, it was a, it's been really wonderful for us so far. Um, then um, I wanted to show you. This is actually our very first um, donation center, what it looked like. Um, we went, you know, we don't have a lot of money for um, furniture and, you know, the budgets are tight everywhere. So um, we just got a, you know, a very cheap plastic type uh, shelving unit from one of your local um, big box stores. You know, it's probably 20 bucks. I, you know, went and made sure that I used baskets that we had and any baskets I could go find for like 50% off coupons, you know. Um, then um, we just created the flyers. Um, and if, you know what, if we wouldn't have had any money, we could have just set boxes out there. So um, they're really funding your, your money shouldn't um, keep you from doing this, this project because um, you can do it on very little funds. Um, but we decided that some of our programs that we wanted to continue them every month, um, the box, top, box tops for education, the um, eyeglasses um, for the Lions Club, um, those, kind of, uh, uh, those kind of things we wanted to always be taking that we didn't want um, to just offer, like we'll take those in on a certain month. Those were things that we wanted to continue. Um, so we needed a spot for them to go, and this is um, what we created. So just so that you can get an idea of what we um, are doing, um, so you can kind of think about your community, and maybe some of these are um, ideas that you could use um, in your library. We have um, the American uh, Cancer Society, they have um, head scarves uh, they have th that you can make um, and donate to them. Um, and we have a local Girl Scouts group who um, was very interested in, in participating in this. And uh, the Girl Scouts alone made 14 of the head scarves. And, so, and we had many uh, patrons who, who liked to sew who also um, donated towards this. Um, so sometimes it's the uh, organizations, the Girl Scouts, who um, drive what we're collecting for. If they come in and say, can we do this, we're, we're absolutely happy to um, participate with them. Um, another one that we did, um, and that, that one took very little time for our staff. We just had the basket out there with the information um, along with the pattern. and. We just sat it out there, and really it was the Girl Scouts. They collected them. They're the ones who sent them off, and um, very little uh, time and effort really on our part. Um, breast cancer awareness um, was a fun thing in our area, and I don't know if any of you have a local salon that's uh, participating in something like this, but they supplied a uh, plain white bra to, I think there were about 150 um, organizations in Sangamon County that um, participated and um, we deck you every organization then um, our business would decorate um, that white bra and you would put like a little um, quote with it or a saying and then you would tell every one of your friends to go to their site and um, vote for your uh, your design um, and it was five dollars per vote and then that money um, that they collected um, went to local salons that supplied scarves and wigs for can can I'm sorry for can cancer patients. Um, so again, they gave us the the bra. We decorated it. Um, we put it out on Facebook to promote it. We you know it was just another way that we could reach out, be part of the community, um, and it was you know a little fun thing that we did. And um, it, um, for most of us, you know, a lot of us have had somebody close to us who the breast cancer um, has affected someone. So it's something that um, we all felt really um, that we wanted to participate with. I was a little bit on the you know, on the fence about because it was a bra, I wasn't sure how my board would feel, but you know what, we were just like, it's breast cancer, we're going to do it. So um, it turned out really well, and um, we're going to do it again next year. So um, another one that um, 
the Forever Home Feline Ranch was, I'm sure you have um, some kind of a uh, rescue um, site near you. And um, this one we kind of accidentally kind of fell upon it. Uh, we collect fleece for uh, Project Linus and we had someone donate fleece that um, had cat and dog hair on it and we knew we couldn't use that for Project Linus so we thought who could use this and um, the local cat res rescue of course could use it for their bedding. So someone donated something and we thought we can't use it for what we intended, but what, how else can we use it? So continuing to think outside the box is really important also. Um, one of our um, pages that works at the library is um, in 4-H and they asked if we could collect um, Prairie Farms milk caps. And so um, we thought that would be a great one to help the 4-H. So it was very easy. Patrons just brought in their little blue caps and we collected them and you put them on, there was an online where we just put the code in. Um, very, very little um, work on the library side for that. Um, autism, um, the Autism Society is another one that's very close to our hearts. Um, we have several young people in our community um, who volunteer who are um, on the autism spectrum, so we like to do whatever we can for them to help them out. Um, and so we, we, this one was just um, for a month. We asked everyone to donate a dollar. Um, then we put ribbons up at the circ desk with people's names on them, and then the money went to the Autism Society of Illinois. So another easy, we just printed out, you know, some of the ribbons, and we just collected the money. So not a lot of library time. Um, very easy for us to do, even if you have a smaller staff. Um, the Alzheimer Association um, was a project that was um, patron driven. We had a, um, a patron come in and ask if we could um, walk with her for this project and so um, the money was raised through their website so there was no real work for the staff. Well, unless, you know, you don't call walking three miles work, but we did. <laughs> we did, all, and um, I have to say that most of my staff participated in that. We were all very happy. Um, you know, if a patron um, asks for something, uh, we really embrace it, and we're you know we just really want to help them. So um, we were all very happy um, to participate, and we will be doing that again this year. Um, on to the next one. So we do um, have other projects that we do, like for a, whole, a monthly donation. So um, some of them would be we did the outlet, the outlet which was um, bicycle recycling, and uh, in the picture was my youth um, a youth director and um, the director of the Boys and Girls Club and the outlet, um, and that's one of our we took the the. Uh, coats that were donated and we met this gentleman and uh, found out that on top of being the Boys and Girls Club director, he is also um, has created a nonprofit called The Outlet and he mentors young men teaching them bike repair. So we held a bike, bicycle recycling on a Saturday. They had their vehicle out there, they had the big signs, all we did was um, promote it and people were able to bring their um, bikes to our parking lot on a Saturday. Um, the cycle outlet took those bikes and then young men fixed them and they're able to um, learn um, skills of bicycle repair and, um, and just it's a great mentoring project. Um, from that project, um, Michael, donated a brand new bike to the library um, for our summer reading program. So it was something that came out of that project that we had never even thought about or had planned for, that we had a, had a really nice prize for our summer reading group. Um, and um, Michael brought um, a van full of kids from the Boys and Girls Club um, to participate in our summer reading program. So we just have a really great um, partnership with them now um, and it all started you know with our coat drive so you just never know when you start these projects like how they're gonna grow where they're gonna go and I kind of like them just to let it 
you know, let it lead us um, and not put too many restrictions so that it can go where it needs to go and grow the way it should. Um, and you may also um, be partner with like Toys for Tots. Um, this year we included with our local fire department um, as a great way for, for us to partner together um, and have a holiday program along with um, collecting the toys um, for tots. Um, it was another easy way where uh, the, they will bring out the box for you and they will come pick the box up. It's just you're promoting and you put it on your on your web page and Facebook and Twitter and you know newsletters and bookmarks and um, to be able to get the information out um, to the community. Um, we just started this year we did dub, the dub trees. Um, we, there's a local domestic violence um, shelter in Sangamon County. Um, and we, we have these trees that we put in the hallway leading into the library. And um, I thought instead of decorating with them with ornaments, we're going to um, put the dove um, birds um, on there. And they, um, the shelter actually provides those um, doves already made and cut out. And on, on the one side, it will tell you what the item is that they are looking for. Um, so it could be... Um, children's items or it can be um, adult items. So uh, we collected over 200 items and we were just so thrilled because it was our very first year. We weren't really sure. They sent us like 50 of those doves and I was just like, oh, wouldn't it be great if, you know, if most of those doves got taken off and the gifts, were, you know, were given um, to the shelter. And I was just completely overwhelmed with the generosity of our community um, to give over 200 items. Um, so that was just a, it, you know, it just shows you that people do want to give and a lot of times you're just not really sure where to give or what to do. So having it out there so easy, you know, every couple of weeks they're in, at least every couple of weeks they're in, you know, checking out their books and getting their stuff. So it's right there. They're walking right past it. Just, it just makes so much sense that we're doing this. Um, from the, the dev tree, we always try to think of what next, what can we do next. So um, this year we have one of our autistic volunteers. He lives in a facility and has no family. Um, my staff is wonderful and we um, all donated our funds to um, make sure that he had a nice Christmas this year. But with that, I was thinking there has to be, you know, other young people living at that institute that don't have family. Um, and so um, my plan is to hopefully be able to partner with the Hope Institute next year so that um, we can include a tree that would be um, specifically for that group of young people that are living um, at the Hope Institute. So. Um, I think that's important too is that we're always thinking ahead of, okay, we did this, this was great, what can we do next year, how can we do it better. Um, it's just um, people really do want to do good, I think, and, and, be, and, and feel like they're making a difference and helping. So um, I, I really feel like we're the perfect place for this to be happening. Um, the next one was another project that we tried the first time this year. Um, it's the Festival of Trees. It happens in Springfield, and it's a huge event. Uh, that was my my very first time to even go there. It's amazing. Um, and sure, I'm sure if you look around, you will find some of these kind of programs that maybe you don't think are really library, but you can find a way to make it work for you. So um, I you know, said to my staff, let's decorate a tree and put our tree out there. And um, it went way, um, way beyond what I thought could have happened with it. Um, I had volunteers help create the ornaments that we put, placed on the tree. Um, we kind of went with the library theme, so we did, you know, library book pages and uh, just it was so great because then everybody kept saying hey how about do this why don't we do this because everyone was so excited to, to 
make this tree wonderful and 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 to reflect of, of the library. Um, so we um, we went out there, and I had no idea how huge of an event this really was. But there were over a hundred eight-foot trees decorated by organizations. There were four-foot trees, or wreaths, or centerpieces. So really, whatever your budget would allow you, you could participate in. Um, all these trees, um, wreaths, and centerpieces are there for people to come in and view and enjoy. And Santa's there, and they have cookies and just everything. But the, when it comes down to what the fundraiser really is, is the trees um, are um, purchased and by different levels of, of sponsors. Um, we were very excited to find out that a platinum, platinum sponsor, who is someone who has given $4,000, um, picked our tree. On top of that, they were a radio station. So then we got even more PR out of this. <laughs> it was just a... I never, I, we did it just to be out there so when the kids were walking by, they're like, there's the library, you know. Uh, we, I didn't really even think further that we would have, you know, a radio station could pick us and that we'd be on the radio. And then the radio station decided that they were going to do um, a contest and they were going to give the tree away to a deserving family. And then we found out that a five-year-old young boy who, um, had brain cancer, and his family was too busy to really, with taking him back and forth to St. Louis for his um, treatments, that they really were not were not even going to be celebrating Christmas. And so the radio station took our tree and put it in that young boy's house. So it was just like one of those really good, feel-good moments that you're just like, wow, our tree, you know, is hopefully making his holiday a little bit brighter. So with that, we also, um, I wanted people to go out there and see our tree. So I thought, what could we do? And so I, while I was out there, I picked up a Memorial Festival of Trees tote bag. And so I um, had it on display here. And it was, we created flyers and said, go out, see our tree. You know, I tried to give them kind of location where it's at. Uh, share it on on Facebook, your picture of you and your family standing in the tree, and we're going to pull out a winner. Uh, one name will be a winner, and you'll get the tote bag. So, um, and it was so much fun to watch the Facebook page and to see the people who were out there standing in front of our tree taking our taking their pictures. And that is myself and my husband when we went out there um, and took our picture. It, it was just a really, um, it's something you wouldn't have thought the library to be in involved in, but really it's just about us being out there in the community and people seeing us. And um, So I think it was a great PR, and then I, the whole outcome of the young boy getting our tree just couldn't have made me any prouder <laughs> to be part of this library. Um, so some more of our community donations um, that we're working on. And, um, we had to little dresses for Africa. Uh, we asked uh, patrons to donate pillowcases. And um, we actually have a craft section in our library where it's a, uh, we have people can bring in their crafts, their leftovers, their leftover yarn, their leftover material, and, it's, and then they can choose things that are on the shelves and take them. Um, so we, we have a kit out there um, where we leave the um, directions, um, the pattern, and pillowcases. And we actually have a very quiet sewing machine. <laughs> and patrons can actually come in and create those little dresses. So they, can, they have an opportunity to donate the pillowcases. They have an opportunity to work on the dresses. Um, and um, Let's see, we, um, and then once we collect them, we will um, send them to the um, organization that, that actually takes those um, dresses to Africa. Um, we, I can, I posted this information and I would say within a couple weeks we had a dozen dresses 
made. And I was so excited. And the pillowcases, we just kept getting more and more. Um, so it was really fantastic, and I thought that was wonderful. Um, what I have just found out that that a um, at our local one of the local churches, they are meeting. Uh, a group of ladies are meeting to create dresses, and they are also collecting the pillowcases. Um, they were hoping by the summer to um, give us 200 completed dresses. Um, they're already past that goal, so I was just told that um, by the summer they're hoping to um, give us 500 completed dresses. I mean, I just can't even. <laughs> I'm just like, that is so amazing. And um, way, I was so excited with 12. I was just don't. I don't know what <laughs> what. Um, that's inspiring and it's wonderful and I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that, um, beyond pleased I think. But what really drew me to the, the pillowcase dresses was that you don't have to be a seamstress, right? You, you, it's a very easy pattern of cutting out on the pillowcase and, and adding the strings for, for the ties. Um, so it's something that you don't have to be very skilled at sewing to do, so I think it appeals to a, a large part of our uh, population. Uh, so um, I think it's something that people can go, oh, I can do this, um, which I think also helps a project grow. Um, Allison's angel gowns is another one. Um, actually, my daughter is someone who pointed this one out to me. Um, she was married a year ago and she said she wants to donate her wedding gown uh, to this. She saw it on a Facebook group page and um, um, it was started by uh, a lady who um, actually lost her child and um, decided that she was very grateful that her church had um, provided her with a dress for her child, um, but a lot of people Go, don't go into the hospital thinking they're not coming home with a baby, so they haven't planned um, that they need to have a dress or that they, if they would like to have a dress. So um, I just thought it was a really great um, organization. Um, so we um, actually take in um, wedding dresses, anyone who would like to uh, donate their wedding gown. I know it can take up a little bit of space, but um, we're it's something that we've really worked on to have a nice little area where we can place them. Um, and I have a little system that when I get to three to five gowns and I, I take them and, um, and meet, meet them to uh, pick them up. Um, and then the other thing is they are, are always looking for seamstress. Now you would have to be someone who is very talented, of course, to make these little gowns. Um, so um, I'm just really, a lot of people have dresses and they put them in a box and then they never do anything with it. So I thought, well, this is a great, great way to get that gown out of your closet and do something really wonderful with it. So um, we've just started this one. I've got my first donation sending them to her and um, not really very much work for us um, at all. Um, just space, you know. Um, a lot of times they come in boxes. Some of them haven't come in boxes, and then you have to try to box them up or put them in a bag and that. But it's really um, a wonderful project, and we've just tried to make a little space for it. And I think it's it's a wonderful program to for us to continue to um, participate with. Project Linus um, is fleece donations. Um, we put it out in the newspaper, and the next thing I know, I had five boxes of fleece uh, being delivered to us. And uh, it's really great. We've had individuals and groups create the blankets. Um, we also, our assisted living group um, works on them, so it's another way that we're partnering with um, the nursing home. Um, and it's great because it's a very easy no-so project, um, um, tying knots at the ed edges of the uh, material. Um, if you don't know about Project Linus, um, you probably do have an organization, something like that, or, you know, if, or even Project Linus, um, sorry, in your area. Um, it's where they collect the blankets and then they are donated to um, children that are sick in the hospital. We're very lucky that we have a local quilt shop, and she's actually our uh, designated um, location.
information to give to, and then she gives them um, to the hospital. So it's real easy for us um, to get those to her. She's right down the road. Um, but we, like I said, we have um, Girl Scout groups come in and work on them. We have people who just come in on their own and just want to sit back there and work on them. We also have these in the um, craft section so that they can be worked on. at a certain day, and then we thought, why don't we just leave it out and they can work on it at any time. So um, that's where we've gotten with that. And like I said, we've had so many wonderful donations of the, the fleece that, um, as, like I said, we had one person who doesn't even live in our community who um, has sent us over five boxes full of fleece. So, um, and the uh, local shops in Springfield um, let us know when fleece is going on sale if we need to purchase any. Um, so it, it's been a wonderful, wonderful project. Um, so I'd like to go back to just talking about brainstorming and considering um, what your community needs. Um, so we just sat down and thought, we are in a very um, a community that is pretty well off and um, a lot of new subdivisions, the schools are new, we, you know, it's, it's a pretty nice little area to live in. Um, so what, what, could we, what could we do? You know, what, program, what organizations do we have? We have Lions Club, we have a women's clubs group, we have um, 4-H, you know, thinking of all the organizations we have, thinking of all the potential partners, thinking of unique projects, not just doing the food for fines and the uh, coat drives, thinking of thinking outside the box really. Um, the other thing is um, leave the building. <laughs> I know that sounds very just simple, but it is. You have to know your community and you're not going to know it by sitting in your office. So you have, you really do, and they're not, everyone's going to come to you, you need to go out to them, so go out to all your businesses. Now, I live with, this community is not very, um, very, not very many businesses, so we, that's why we kind of have, we kind of go into Springfield and the Sangamon County, um, just because there's, there's only probably five or six real businesses here in this community and we only have one gas station, you know, we don't, we don't have a Walmart, we don't have any big stores, um, but the, the ones that we do have, it's really important that we go out and we talk with them um, so they, you know, want to participate and want to help with us. Um, some of the other things that it, we do to leave the building, um, there's two parades in the community. Um, one's at the 4th of July, and one is the school has a, a homecoming parade. So we participate in both parades. Uh, at 4th of July, um, there's a big 4th of July um, carnival. We have a booth out there. Um, there's an Old Town Fall Festival, um, and we have a booth at that also. Um, so we are participating in the events that are out in our community. Um, and I think that has a big impact on your on your patrons. They see you. They're seeing you out everywhere. Um, I think that um, we we just can't just sit behind our computer and think, oh well, they'll come knocking at our door. Um, marketing and outreach. You have to be um, using everything that you can. Um, social. Media is so useful. Uh, one thing that I, another thing that we've started using with our social media is that I personally um, belong to a bunch of different Facebook groups. So I use those Facebook groups to get the information out. Um, we use our local paper. We have a newsletter. We are lucky enough that we uh, we have a newsletter that we send out quarterly. Um, and then it's um, to every patron, it's mailed. Uh, we have online uh, newsletter also. We use constant contact to get our emails out to our patrons. Um, we are Twitter, you know, we're, we're, we try every way that we can to get out to the 
patrons to get that information to them. They're not going to participate if they don't know about the program. Um, word of mouth is amazing, but we also, you know, <laughs> realistically, we have to get it out as um, in as every area that we can um, to reach the most people. We have a great um, partnership with our school. They're wonderful at letting us um, let the letting parents know what's going on here at the library. Um, and I know that that's not every community. Um, the previous community I was in, um, it was really hard to get your stuff into the school. Um, but um, luckily here we are, and we are uh, the librarian at the school. Uh, we have a great relationship with her. So um, building those relationships, being out in the community, really important um, for your programs to, um, to really be their best. Um, so I know as I've been telling you all these things, um, all these different ideas, your, you know, can your library do it? And I just want to tell you, yes, you can. Um, most organizations will pick up the items that are donated. So if you're saying, oh, I don't have the time, I don't, you know, yes, they will, most of them will come out and they will pick up the, the stuff that you have collected for them. So there's no driving, there's no, you know, your time. Um, little space really is needed for most of everything that I've been talking about. Um, you can start with just one basket or a box to collect items. Um, I know that we always seems like a lot of new projects, everyone wants to say, no, you can't do that, no, that's not going to work. It's, oh, we've tried that before, and those things drive me crazy. It's, no, it's, yes, let's try it, you know. Um, very little staff time is required. Um, people want to give. Um, sometimes they just don't know where to go, um, and you can make it easy for them. So I, I really do hope that you all think about some of these ideas and think about um, different organizations in your community and different partnerships and um, you know try to give it a try um, and think about you know think outside the box I guess is my biggest thing is what else can you do um, like I said it's it really takes very little time. Um, you're already, you know, putting things in, out in the paper. So, it, I mean, it really is. Uh, you're already creating flyers. You're already doing some of these things that you're just, you know, adding this onto. So, um, I would just hope that you all would, if you can take one idea that I've given you today, that would be amazing. If you, and if you can give me an idea of something else that I could try, I would be very happy. Um, because I do um, a lot of things, I don't come up with my own idea. I'm looking at other libraries' websites and other places where I can find information. Um, I, like I said in the beginning, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We should be sharing our ideas with each other. And um, so I would like to let you know that if you would like to, um, my website um, has a lot of our information on it, our programs, our newsletter um, for more ideas. Um, we are Facebook. We're very social on our, our social media. We have a lot of interaction with our patrons. Um, we um, are on Pinterest, um, and that's another great place to put all of our programs and projects that are going on. Um, Twitter, uh, we also are, um, like to try to get a lot of our information out there. Trying to hit every kind of age group of where, where are our patrons at? What are they doing? Where are they getting their information? Um, where we really uh, want to be right out there where they can find us, um, get our information. Um, if you have questions, um, you can anytime, uh, director at rochesterlibrary.org. I love to share my information. And um, like I said, if you have any um, programs or projects that you could share with me, I would be thrilled if you would send them to me and let me know what you're doing. Um, what's a little bit different with this kind of a online uh, session uh, is generally when I speak to a, a group at a conference, it's in person and we can share our ideas back and forth and I can, uh, it's just a little different when I'm sitting here looking at my computer and saying, give me your ideas. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, if you have any questions, please make sure to send them to me. Um, I think I'm just a few minutes early getting done with the session. Oh, no, perfect timing, Janet. That was, that was, Is it good? No, I absolutely you. Whatever, yeah. Five minutes for questions, absolutely perfect. Um, so actually, we do have some questions from the audience and some comments. Um, so, uh, Laura, would you like to uh, share one or two of those? Um, they'd like to know <coughs> where and how you store all the donated items. <coughs> well, we, we do have our baskets, and then we do have a closet that we... Um, that we actually utilize for storing our extra things before um, uh, the organizations come pick them up. But our organizations are really good. If I call them today, they're out by the afternoon to pick up the stuff. So generally when our baskets get full, I'm, I'm calling. And I didn't add a picture of our, our latest new and improved. Um, because it's been so, um, so successful, we did spend money in getting a larger um, piece of furniture, a shelving unit that has enough area for probably about 10 to 12 baskets now. Um, so we do have a bigger um, area where we do take the donations. And it's actually when you walk in our library, uh, right by the front door along one wall. And so it's easy for them to drop it right there and then go um, come into the library and do their business. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, thanks. I was, I was trying to figure out where you were putting the dozen bicycles that got donated, you know, in, until I came. But if they're coming... Well, uh, they actually brought their truck that day and picked them oh, up. Okay, but, but, but the groups are coming almost immediately. The groups not, are coming. You're not storing yep. long. Term. Exactly. I set it up with them. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Um, we have a couple um, places who are saying, yes, they, that they had some programs where they did uh, donations. Um, one place had a uh, mitten and hat and scarf tree. Um, we have uh, donating books to Toys for Tots, um, a knit and crochet group that donates items. So, <clears throat> yeah, some people are, are doing stuff, although I don't think quite on your scale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. So, so here's a question. Have, have organizations started approaching you? To, to? Yes, okay. they, yes. They are starting to, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like most of like the shelters um, and the uh, the animal shelters definitely are now. Um, you know, we have the dog shelter. Um, it's like, what can we come up and do? And you know, so we're open for everything. So yeah. Okay. And so, cor correct me if I'm wrong. The way I understood it is, you do have uh, some of these programs are kind of continual, where others are. This month we're going to do X, and this month we're going to do Y. Uh, how do you decide which are which? Is it just a question of scale or like bicycles constant wouldn't work versus monthly or? or how? Exactly. Yes. Um, the uh, bicycles once, you know, one, once every hover often he would ask us to do that. Um, the things that we keep are the smaller, like the box tops, this, the eyeglasses, um, the fleece. So it pretty much kind of um, what really would work and what's, what we could really achieve and what we could do. I, I think, you know, like the bikes, we, you can't keep bikes for longer than a couple days, right, when you take them in. So, um, so far, they've kind of, um, it's been easy for us to just keep a handful of things that we do constant and then the other things we just focus on monthly. That way it's just a focus or even a focus on a day project that we're doing. Um, Great, okay. Our limited space, sure. you know, kind of does figure into. Like I said, the dresses, the dresses, the dresses are huge. If you <laughs> so, the wedding dresses, that was the one that we really can't do all the time. So we will say, like, okay, this month we're doing dresses, and I will take them in, and then we'll say, you know, maybe every quarter do dresses. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, how it, they kind of depends on each each project that we're working on, and how often do the um, organizations really want to come get those? Right. Okay. You know, so we talk, we sit down and talk with all each of the organizations and really uh, understand, like, you know, they don't want 20 boxes of books. They don't have the space for that. So, you know, we kind of sit down and really brainstorm with them what they're looking for and what they need um, before we actually put it out there to the public. And, Christy, you said we got one more suggestion. Yeah, so it is, you're asking for other ideas. Uh, 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 an organization called Ethiopia Reads. So I looked it up. It's a... Um, 
organization that um, their goal is providing in-language books to children of Ethiopia, and their wording is actually interesting. It says they plant libraries, and they've planted over 60 libraries across Ethiopia with books in their language. Huh. And so that's something that you can donate to um, as well. Oh. Ethiopia Reads. Ethiopia Reads? I'll be looking into that <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Well, Janet, that, that is our time. Thank you very much for, uh, for taking time out of your day to, to share your library story with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, her contact information is there on the screen. So um, thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, you're very welcome.